Ladies and gentlemen, I have been uh, losing sleep over this. Uh, that's why I haven't been uploading for a really long time. I gave you the Char 2 c video. That was good. Uh, but it took me a long time because I've been, you know, getting this new software and stuff like that. But, um, I wanted to do this video on Verno Vos. And I really want to, you know, give the story justice. Because the way I see it is this is a great pilot and he's just, he's way overlooked. And, you know, the way he was able to just, um, shoot down, you know, shoot, you know, I mean, not shoot down, perhaps, but shoot at every pilot that uh, approached him in this battle is a testament to how, you know, really good he was at, at flying. So, uh, if you will, like and subscribe, you know, share this video if you can. Um, but let's get into it. So, one of us, uh, joined the, um, Air Force, German Air Force at least, in uh, 1915, I do believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, I don't know exactly when he started, but I'm really uh, focusing on his last, his, you know, his last stand, because I mean, that's, that's what everyone talks about, but I'll talk about his albatross, and, you know, some things about Voss, but, you know, this is what we're going to do for now, so, you know, Voss, Voss is albatross, uh, B3, Right, so everyone uses albatross, especially even Manfred Richthofen at this time. There was no triplane yet. Everyone, when they think of like World War One aircraft, they think of the you know the three-winged red triplane, right? Well, this hadn't been invented yet at this time. What I'm talking about. So he had this albatross, and he painted it like a. He had a special little paint thing, and he, he put a a halt on it, and then he put a halt on the top of it, and they put a little. Um, a swastika on it for good luck, right? That's what that meant back then, because there was no Nazis then. So, you know, and he was, he was, he, he, from a lot of the photographs I've decoded, he'd, he'd love to, like, put his hand in his pocket when he was posing, and, you know, uh, he was just, he, was, he, he seemed like a good guy, you know, he seemed like that, uh, like a free spirit, almost, you know, but, you know, that would kind of be the death of him, I mean, like, no, he can't do that at this time, so, he, he is a pilot that liked to fly alone, right, he liked to just get kills on his own, and have no, you know, interruptions, and, you know, he was, he was, he was, uh, you know, he loaned from Oswell Balka, if I'm saying that right, I hope so, he loaned, you know, you know, the Dick of Arnold, you know, so he, he had really good flying skills. Um, he was a great pilot. By all means, like, no way you can deny that. You know, the, the, the way he was able to, you know, fly his plane, you know, um, be able to shoot at the engines instead of just shooting through the wings or anything like that. Well, most pilots might just shoot through the wings. He's able to hit the engines almost like, you know, ac so accurate that a lot of the pilots that said, you know, that, that got shut down by Voss, but survived, said that he was just this great pilot, and he was able to, you know, shoot the engines, right, and it's just, that's just, like, amazing, because, I mean, there's this game called Rise of Flight, and I try to do that, and that's, that's pretty hard for me, so, to see, like, Voss be able to do that, that's amazing, uh, but, you know, anyways, so Voss, September, um, 27th, 23rd of September is his last day on this oil, sadly. So he's he's uh, 56 Squadron with James McCudden, Arthur Reese Davis. They're going on a patrol in, in Belgium uh, and they find this scout plane and they shoot it down, uh, killing two, uh, two, crew, two crew members of the uh, two engine two uh manned reconnaissance airplane so that was pretty good and then they got uh it was pretty uneventful from what i've learned it was pretty uneventful and then they see this silverly blue triplane you know spinning down with an se5 
and you know that 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 SC five would have to uh, do an emergency landing because Voss hit him enough. I think his I think the pilot got wounded actually. Let's say it crash land. Voss let it happen, so you know, Voss didn't try to get him. But fifty six squadron, half of them would stay up above the clouds, and then a couple of them, you know, they thought it was going to be super easy to kill this guy. I mean, like there's this there's this triplane. It's just he's, it doesn't seem like he's got any friends, you know, he's just going to be easy to take out, but, oh boy, were they wrong, so, he gets, he sees him, right, and Voss sees him, and he, he turns in this, like, this crazy way, he's like, he turns with this flat half spin, and he just turns the plane 300, uh, I'm sorry, not 300, 180 degrees, which means he basically turned the plane, like, I, it's hard to explain, <clears throat> Excuse me. He did this crazy turn, and he just like it. It, sh it shocked the hell. It shocked it me, and that's one of the reasons why I really like this pilot. Cause I'm like, really? He did that? No way. So he, you know, boot hauled right rattle, and he, and he came back at them. And that's one of the things in the the Dick of Honor is that says you should always um, put the your en the uh, enemy on the offensive. So you should shoot the enemy, uh, you know, tone into the, his attack. So he does that. He tones into the, the attack, opens fire with his uh, Vigils machine guns. And the pilots are stunned, but, you know, <laughs> they can't just, like, sit there and take it. So they maneuver. And that shocks James McCutton and Arthur Reese Davis. So Arthur Reese Davis and James McCutton... You know, they have to fly and try to take him out. So, one of us, he kind of, he turns and shoots at them. And then, you know, he flies up and then down again, shooting at them. He puts holes in every single uh, plane that approached him. Every single one. All eight. I mean seven in total. My bad. Seven um, planes he shot at. And he put holes in every single one of them. But the problem is, he could never really down any of them. So, they were, you know, they shot the wings or he shot the engines or whatever. But he's too focused on not getting shot that he's he can't really do what I was explaining wholly on the video. Where he's just able to shoot the engines and that's it. And he's able to just kind of, you know, maneuver the plane bravely despite the odds. And he's doing that. He's maneuvering, never staying still for more than three seconds. And so, he's doing all these crazy maneuvers, and it's like, kind of, you know, scary. And then, you know, he's shooting at them, and then an albatross enters the fray. Right, and I don't know which albatross, like who, you know, was the pilot, uh, I'm sorry. But, you know, so this pilot comes in, and then and they, shoot the, they, they shoot this albatross down, but... You know, it it stalls them basically, and then Alba, uh, a new albatross comes in like a few uh, seconds later, and this one puts up more of a fight. Okay, and this one they have to shoot at this one, but Voss attacks uh, one of the you know SC fives and opens fire, uh, and so that SC five he pulls away from the attack. But ultimately, the albatross goes down again. But this gives Voss time to go straight up, and you know he because it's it a triplane, so it has you know, a lot of lift. So I mean, so it has a lot of drag, but it's able to climb. It's, it's super. It can climb and it can do inward turns. So basically, he climbs above the clouds, and, and they don't want to attack him. I mean, he's he's done so much damage to these planes that they're not going to risk it. So they're not going to like try to follow him, plus SC-5s are very sluggish planes, and they're kind of just like, you know, if you, if you made your plane really good, you know, with SC-5, then it would be good, but the factory made, no, it was just a crappy plane, so, you know, they're not, they're not going to bother attacking him, um, but Voss, amazingly, he comes down, again, he comes back down, out of the clouds, and opens fire on an SC-5, again, and, you know, because he's low and slow, he, you know, 
James McCutt and Arthur Reese Davis, they attack him. And sadly, like it's kind of sad, but you know, they got him. Uh, I think it was it was either James McCutton or Arthur Reese Davis. So uh, yeah, it was James McCutton, and they they're flying, they're doing a um, like a boom and zoom. So they both shoot, and they're, they're going in a you know they're they're flying head on, opening file, and then one uh, Arthur Reese Davis gets behind Voss, and opens fire, uh, firing a, a quick bullet. But for the first time in the battle, you know he he's just he he flies in a straight line. So. Given how much he straightened up, people think he was, you know, wounded, obviously. I mean, the only reason why he would do something like that. So, you know, he's wounded, and then Arthur Reese Davis continues to follow him down. Um, and so, he, they fire another bullet into the triplane, and I think that that actually killed him, because he didn't. He started to just dive down, almost as if, you know, the bullet hit him so hard that he just kind of, you know, he slept forward and you know, messed up the uh, the stick. So it, he plunged straight down with the triplane. He was he wasn't like he wasn't that high, but obviously he's probably dead by now. Um, his plane, you know, hit the ground and hundreds of fragments just it's gone. I'm pretty sure the only thing that survived, besides the injured, was the, um, the rudder, which is kind of sad, but, you know, whatever, and, you know, so 56 Squadron, they land back at base, and they're just traumatized, like, they've never seen something like this, they've never seen, they've never experienced a pilot that was, would be able to do all this in this crazy span of time, which is only seven minutes, but, they are, you know, they're crying, they are, um, they're not celebrating like they should, they would be, and, you know, the, one of the only reasons why this story is, you know, able to be known is because of Arthur Reese Davis and James McCutton's little, you know, diary and, uh, the, you know, the letter that he wrote, and I think it was, Arthur Reese Davis goes up to James McCutt and says, "If only I could shoot him down alive." It's kind of funny because he did, he did shoot him again, even though he was clearly, he was clearly wounded. So he shot him again, but you know. So you know, James McCutt, you know, they all think that you know, Voss is this great guy. Kind of couch, uh, very different for the Red Baron's treatment. You know, he was just. The Red Baron was, you know, the people that shut down the Red Baron were, like, kind of unapologetic. They're like, you know, I would shoot him down again or something like that. I'll probably do a story on the Red Baron, perhaps. I don't know. I don't really like him as much as Voss. I think Voss is the better pilot. But, you know, they really, you know, they didn't take any pleasure in killing Voss. And I think it was three days later when they learned that it was the famous pilot Voss. They just they cried. They had to move on because it's a war, and it's not like, oh yeah, we killed a pilot. We're just gonna have to lay down and and die because we killed that famous pilot. So they moved on, but you know, that's like so little people know about that. You know, I think I, I, I mean that's one of the reasons why I make this video is because I want more people to know about this story. And if you can, like, I want you to research the story more, because no doubt I got some things wrong in my video on this that I'm about to upload. But, you know, thinking about it with Voss, you know, I think he was a good guy. You know, he was a really good pilot, and I think if he was with us today, he would really be the one of the best pilots for sure. But I think... You know, in a way, he needed to die because he was someone needed to take a, needed to take over. And in the Red Baron movie, uh, the new one, by the way, the two thousand and eight one, it shows Voss with his triplane, which is pretty cool. But at the end, it just kind of shows that, like, it, it, the only reason why it's even mentioned is because, you know, 
he dies, like, because they're at a, fo fi a focal factory, and they just see him, you know, someone, you know, uh, I think it was a, 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 a captain said, you know, that they found that they were using the enemy's engines, because it wasn't good enough, which is true, I mean, the engines for the Germans, they weren't as good, because, you know, more emphasis had to be put on, on fighting, I mean, it wasn't easy for the Germans, so they didn't make the best engines of it at that time, but, you know, even though he only, you know, got 48 kills, I think he should be, he should have a, a, a spot in, um, the history books, and he should be way more popular than he is, but, that said, uh, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm going to be trying to make a uh, video on the Battle of uh, Fort Foe. That should be coming out soon, because I did you know, say that I'm going to do that. But anyways, if you like this video, like and subscribe. See ya.